Greetings and hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to calculate the mass of the sun by using data of a couple of planets orbiting the sun. In other words, we're going to use the Newton synthesis of Kepler's uh, Kepler's uh, third law of planetary motion, the law of harmony. Um, okay, here's a look at the second page of the handout. Uh, it starts with a description in the beginning. So the Sun, Jupiter, and Kepler's laws. Um, here's Kepler's third law of harmony. The ratio of the period of a planet squared to the length of the semi-major axis cubed, mean radius cubed, is a constant. This works for um, Mercury going around the Sun, Venus going around the Sun, the Earth going around the Sun, and all the planets going around the Sun. It doesn't work so good if you look at comets because they have a highly eccentrical orbit. And there, you can't use radius. You have to use the semi-major axis A from the previous video. And we ended up um, calculating the period over R cubed ratio was four pi squared over GM. There's that constant part. But this is just looking at this formula. And the value of G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons, meters squared, kilograms squared. So we go down, and we're looking at two or bodies orbiting the same thing. So Mercury going around the sun, Venus going around the sun. That's one way of finding the period, with T1 being maybe Mercury. And, oh, this is going to use planet 2 as Earth. For planet 2, Earth, 4 pi cubed, 4 pi squared over R cubed over GM, where M is going to be the mass of the sun, mass of the sun. So we can basically divide these into each other, and the four pi squareds and G and M are going to cancel. So here's like an equation that we can use. Knowing the time it takes for the planets to orbit, we can get the radius using the Earth's orbit as uh, a reference and using the Earth's period as a reference. Those are well known. You know what the, the period of the uh, Earth is. It's one year. It's defined. Uh, the distance to the Earth was well known. Um, that's known as an astronomical unit. Um, it's a very common distance measurement um, that's used in astronomy. Um, it also makes it easier to remember numbers within the, the, um, the solar system. If you take the astronomy class, you'll learn all about that. Um, so, orbital radius of like a planet like Mercury can be calculated if you know its period. And that's very easy. You just have to observe Mercury year after year after year. When it returns to the same point in the sky, uh, a Mercury year has passed. The same thing for Venus. Um, so it's a very convenient way of using a couple simple observations of the period of a planet to measure its distance. So let's go look at the instructions so i hopefully these instructions will be pretty straightforward uh, first thing we're going to use kepler's law find the mean radius of the planet using that ratio of um, period squared to radius cubed as a constant but in this case you know t1 will be the planet in question t2 is going to be the earth and one nice thing about this equation is that you don't have to be really picky with with units as long as they're the same so period if period one is in days period two should be days if you're using seconds seconds years years for distances same thing um, meters meters or miles miles or kilometers kilometers or in the case we're using we're going to use au to au so down here I don't have this filled in yet so we have um the period given, 0.241, that's the period of Mercury around the sun. Um, T2, the Earth, period is 1.00. So essentially now we're going to find out the radius by using this equation here. R2 is the Earth, that's 1. T1 over T2, that's going to be 0.24. So essentially it's going to be 1, pull up my calculator. I don't need to put the one in. So we got R2 is one. That's the Earth. I'm going to skip that. 
T1 over T2 is 0 0.241, 241. And I need to take that to the two thirds power, which is basically 0 0.66666 repeating. That's enough sixes. So we got 0.387 for the mean radius. 0.387. Try to use three significant figures. I think to get the mean radius, I'm going to essentially take uh, an AU is 1.5 times 10 to the 11. So I'm going to multiply that by 1.5 times 10 to the 11. So times 1.5 to the 11th power and 5.81 times 10 to the 10th. 5.81 e e to the 10th. Um, I'm just going to do that instead of times 10. Save some time. Um, and then I'm going to need to cube that value. Put this over here. Cube that value. So I'm going to go back to it. And y the x to the third. This is going to be a huge number. 1.96 to 32 power. 1.96 e e to the 32. Now, Basically, what we're going to do, we're going to plot the mean radius cubed of the planet on the y-axis and the period squared of the planet on the x-axis. And hopefully, it's going to be a nice linear fit so that your constant is going to be this gm for pi squared. And then from that, if we know the value of g, we can figure out the mass. Now, here's the cheat. Kepler, neither Kepler nor Newton knew the, knew the value of big G, but uh, an English scientist, um, Cavendish, did solve for that, did an experiment using a torsional pendulum um, in the late 1800s to figure out the value of G, which was very close to a value you could estimate that I showed in a previous video. All right, so let's keep on going. So period, I have to change the period to seconds. Now I'm going to do this chart, T1 over T2. Here's a period in years, 0. 0.241. The conversion factor is 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds per year. So basically, 0. 0.241. Get out my calculator. 0. 0.241 multiplied by 3.15 e e to the 7. And that will be uh, 7.59 times 10 to the 6. 7.59 e to the 6. And I'm going to need to square that value. And squared, ding, 5.76 to the 13th power. 5.76 e to the 13th. Oops. 5.76 e to the 13th. That one's done. I'll do this one real quick. This will be 1 times 3.15 e e to the 7. And that value squared. Oops. Sorry about that. Is, okay, these written down. Uh, 3. Sorry, do that. Um, 9.92 e e to the 14th. This value cubed 1.5 times 10 to the 11 cubed is going to be 3.38 e e to the 33. I'm going to go ahead and do the same um, process to fill in this chart. Be right back. I went through the same process, one, two, three, four, five, six, and filled in Venus. And you want to try that yourself to make sure you're on the same same boat and they have no questions. You need to do the same thing for the rest of the data. That's your task. Now, once you have everything filled out, you're going to need to go to a graphing program. I'm going to use only three data points. Um, on the x-axis, we've got the period squared. So I'm going to put in definition period squared, and that's going to be t squared. Units are going to be second squared. And in the options, be sure that you change to three significant figures. 
done. On the y-axis is going to be um, the radius cubed, r cubed, and units meters cubed. Make sure the options are for three significant figures. Done. And now I'm just going to put in my data. So 5.76 e to the 13th, uh, 1.97 e to the 32, uh, 3.75 e to the 14th, 1.28 e to the 33, 9.92, e to the 14th, 3.38, e to the 33. There's all that. Kind of nice. Now I'd like to give my little bit of extra space. I can bring this down. Uh, over here, I can click on this value and make it uh, maybe a little bigger, 1.2, e to the 15th just so that I don't take all the space. Double click on the graph, put a title in. This is, you can just call it um, R3 versus T squared or Newton's synthesis or some title. Give it a title. Leave it there. Um, I look there, it looks like it goes through zero. Highlight all the data. Uh, curve fit, make it linear. Intercept should be very close to zero. Number, <laughs> it's a huge number, 10 to the 30th, but the y-axis goes to the 33rd power. So like if this was a thousand, this would be one. So it's pretty small, it's, it's very, pretty close. And this is what I need to pull out. The slope 3.41 times 10 to the 18th. So if I go back to my paper, whatever you get for slope and say the truth, it's gonna be about the same value. I'm going to put that in here. Erase this kind. Sorry about that. 3.41 e to the 18 power. There's now the slope, the mass of the sun. If I take this equation and rearrange it, GME 4 pi squared, that should be the slope. R cubed on the y axis, T squared on the x axis. This will be the slope. If I rearrange that, GM. 5 by 4 pi squared for m, you get this. So you got 3.41 e to the 18th times 4 times pi squared divided by 6.67 e to the negative 11 equals. When I do that, I get 2.02 ee to the 30th kilograms. We're going to kind of weave our hands here for units, but you have to make sure that you use seconds for period, um, meters for radius. You've got to, otherwise this is going to be a crazy unit. And that's pretty close. And when I mean show calculation, um, percent error is essentially uh, the difference between the two. unit divided by the um, accepted value times 100 equals that comes out to 1.5 percent pretty amazing now from here it's more your turn close to the same value i said now you're going to use data for objects orbiting jupiter and get the mass of jupiter but again, uh, be careful with units. This data, easy to measure. You can watch um, Europa over several weeks and see it go behind Jupiter or in front of Jupiter. And same with Ganymede to, to calculate these. Galileo is able to do this. Um, and then make estimates of the orbital radius um, based upon the number of Jupiters for use, use, use actually the size of Jupiter as a reference point. And then you have to work backwards to figure out how big Jupiter is. But this, we'll just use data that's 
that's uh, more relevant for today than what, what Galileo actually had to use. So your numbers will be a lot better. Um, the steps are going to be very, very similar um, to what you just did. These six steps, you know, taking the period, but it instead of being in years, here it's in days. So be careful. Everything's not exactly the same. So, and I've given you the orbital radius rather than making you calculate it. That's a little bit more complicated. Um, and you should be able to paste your graphs in these regions. So this asks for the plot of the constant versus the sun. I should be able to just delete that. Heck, heck I can use this as my title rather than the title that I used on here. Uh, click on the graph, right click, copy, and then paste that into my document. Now, again, with uh, the document on, on Schoology, if you don't have Microsoft Word, just download it to the computer. Don't try to open it, and then upload it to your Google Drive, your do your Google account, and um, the, the uh, Google Drive should put it into a format that you can work with. All right. Well, that's it. I hope um, this is helpful, and you are able to successfully calculate the mass of the Sun and the mass of Jupiter by using data that if you had some time in your hands, you could do yourself. All right, thanks and have a great day.